the nervous system. So we just briefly touched on the nervous system yesterday. Now we're going to get a little deeper. So my movement, my movement, how I move, how I take the jump shot I take today is going to be based on my intent. All right, so how do I want to take that jump shot? Do I want to take a set standing jump shot? Do I want to jump while I take that jump shot? Do I want to jump and jump high enough to get over a defender's hand when I take that jump shot? Do I want to do a fadeaway jump shot? All that's my intent, my past experience. Have I done this before? If I have done this before, what was successful, what was unsuccessful? My internal feedback, Golgi tendon, muscle spindles, right? where my body is in space based on my internal receptors. My external feedback, if we're talking about that same shot, Floor? Can I see the floor? I jumped off the floor. Was there a wet spot on the floor? Did I slip? My defender, is he terrible? Is he good? Is he big? Does he look mean? Does he look like when I jump up he's just going to hit me? Foul. All right. So, all of this stuff has an effect on motor planning, and motor planning is just writing that program that's going to recruit the right muscle fibers and the right muscles to create the motion I want. It will also affect something called the gamma motor system, which you can think of as controlling, well, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, we've been beating it up for 10 hours, but now I'm actually going to say it the way it's supposed to be used controls tone, the amount of activity in a muscle. You have all these proprioceptors. You guys learned a little bit of this, right? Right? Golgi tendon organ and muscle spindles. So I'll give you my take on it. Review's good. And then we'll talk about some other receptors. Uh, muscle spindles. What do muscle spindles, what do they rate? What are they, what are they trying to give you information on? stretch. Write this down for me. Your muscle sp spindles are your stretchometer. I want you to think about one of those little, you guys know like the, the old school like valve, and there's like a little needle, right? And like it like gets pinned this way. Like if I had a red marker. Like over here would be like warning level, right? And then this is okay, right? And this is calm. You guys with me on this one? That's your stretchometer. This is your muscle spindle. Muscle spindle equals stretchometer. thing I want you guys to keep in mind is it's not just how far you stretch. It's also how fast you stretch. It's rating stretch on an intensity basis. How far and how fast and how long you hold that stretch. Now, muscle spindle set up a reflex. Do you guys know what that reflex is? You guys are going to laugh when I write this down. You guys have never, yeah, never heard of stretch re reflex? 
So if you pull on a muscle spindle really, really hard, it sends a signal back to my spinal cord that tells that muscle to do what? Contract. So it increases muscle activity, right? That's it. Increases muscle activity. Where's some place that we see this happen? Quads and hamstring, how? Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll take that into consideration in a second. You're actually combining a few, right. few different receptors with something like PNF stretching. Where's something where we see just like stretch receptors being activated and this response? So you're stretching your calf and it goes, mm, I don't think so, and just cramps up and you fall over. Sure, I've never actually seen that happen, but I would say that's a good... That would be a good example. Have you guys ever seen, um, you guys ever done like a high kick? How do you like that for my high kick? Was that good? If I just do this, did my leg just fall to the ground at the speed of gravity? No, it was quicker, right? I didn't force it down though. Did I squeeze my glute to get that down? No, what hit the end of its length? Hamstrings, so the muscle spindles in my hamstrings went, <laughs> that's, that's far and fast for you, <laughs> Mr. Tightness. Could be, could be. There could be something in there about Charlie horses. Um, but let's keep it simple for now. I just stretched my hamstring really, really hard, which sent muscle spindle sent a bunch of signal back to my spinal cord, and my spinal cord told my hamstrings to do what? Which pulls my leg back down real quick. Does that all make sense? I was kind of off. Is that kind of like the uh, elastic limit? Um, the elastic limit would be adding how far your connective tissue is willing to stretch to this. Okay. So let's look at Golgi tendon organ. Did this help? You understand muscle spindles a little bit? Your Golgi tendon organ equals, what do they rate? Tensionometers. Now remember, this is not just how much tension, but how fast that tension starts building up. Now, reflexively, what does that make your body want to do? If you build up too much tension in a muscle, what eventually happens? It fails, right? Not due to fatigue, but just like literally you'll go to, and it, it shuts you down, right? That's, that's a very extreme version of this. Does anybody know what that reflex is called that Golgi tendon organs are probably responsible for? Whoops. Let me learn how to spell. Autogenic inhibition. You guys ever heard of this? So what does autogenic probably mean? Automatic. automatic, genic referring to within the same muscle. Inhibit means to stop it. stop it. So this decreases muscle activity reflexively. You guys want to see how this works? give you a couple of quick examples. So everybody back your chairs up away from your desks. Now I just told you that you probably don't need to stretch your hamstrings as much as you thought you did, but we're going to do a hamstring stretch because it's just an easy example. All right. 
So I want you guys to sit at the end of your chairs. And I want you to straighten out one leg. Now on that leg, go ahead and let your foot plantar flex. I don't want to stretch your sciatic nerve. I just want to stretch your hamstring. Make sure your knee's locked. I want you to keep your spine nice and straight for me so that you tilt at the pelvis. We get as much hip flexion as we need to to stretch the straight leg hamstring. I want you to just go to a point of mild stretch. Now once you're there, you have to pretend like you're not easily distractible and you have to stay in one place. Now as soon as you went into a stretch, what did you feel an increase in? Tension. Tension. Stay. stay. You guys got to stay with me on this one. That increase in tension is what? Muscle spindles were triggered by the stretch. They sent that signal to my spinal cord, which then sent the signal back to my muscle to contract. It's not what we wanted with the stretch now, is it? But if we hold it long enough, what you'll feel is a buildup in t tension, we'll eventually start signaling who? The GTOs. Now the GTOs go way, 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 way. That's stretched, but that's not that bad. Now you're building up tension. I don't need it. So what does the GTO start doing if you hold this long enough? It causes you to relax. Has anybody got that relax yet? Yeah. There you go. So there's a little example of how those two things are related. It can. Can the pro what's the the problem with this is is which one's more reactive? Which one's easier to turn on? Muscle spindles. Muscle spindles, right? A lot of the research you guys have seen where it's like stretching's ineffective or you have to hold a stretch for a certain amount of time, it's probably 30 plus seconds. That has to do with the fact that muscle spindles react faster than the GTO and for most people, it takes them a little longer to settle in, stop moving around, and let autogenic inhibition do its job. Does that make sense? Cool. You guys want one more thing about the muscle spindle and GTO? Mm -hmm. Everybody stand up. I want you to put one arm out in front of you. Now close your eyes. Now I want you to take, you have to keep your eyes closed. Don't you open your eyes. You have to take your other hand and make it level with that hand. Open your eyes. <laughs> you cats are amazing. How do you do that with your eyes closed? Right? So there's a little example of how the GTO and muscle spindle are related to proprioception. You did this, right? What did you increase here? Tension. Oh. Tension. What did you increase here? Stretch, right? So you stretched out your lat a little bit, your teres major a little bit, maybe your subscap a little bit, maybe there's a little tension in your anterior delt. So what did your body have to do on this side? Match it. Oh. Crazy. Now, you have more receptors than just GTOs <laughs> and muscle spindles. You have things called Ruffini endings that deal with things like lateral stretch, which is like pulling that we see on fascia, as well as sustained pressure. And they'll decrease sympathetic activity, which has to do with your autonomic nervous system. Pacini corpuscles, all right? Rapid pressure change and vibration. You have vibration receptors, did you know that? They're in a lot of different places you have vibration receptors. Crazy, right? Vibration receptors. Type 3 and 4 interstitial receptors. These are some of your pain receptors. Noci have you guys heard the term nociceptors? Right, they give you a noxious stimulus and tell your body that, hey, whatever's going on right now, right here, probably not a good thing. All these different receptors give you awareness of your environment, where your body is in space, how you're moving, which your central nervous system then organizes and creates a motor program, just like a computer program, to react to with the intended movement that you'd like to do. 
Does that make sense? Talk about a rabbit hole. You remember that little thing we did yesterday where I was like, just imagine if you thought about every muscle that affected flexion and all the ligaments around that joint. Can you imagine how much you'd have to think about to get this going? Crazy, right? 